the only prayer you ever said was thank you, it would be enough. This quote by Meister Eckhart shares with us the power that gratefulness plays in our life. So think over the course of the last week how many times you expressed appreciation. Did you express it verbally? Did you send somebody a thank you note? When you did express your gratitude, was it deep and from the heart? And did you do it as often as you might like to do it? Our Unity co-founder, Charles Fillmore, wrote, it has been found by experience that a person increases his blessings by being grateful for what he has. Gratitude, even on the mental plane, is a great magnet. When gratitude is expressed from the spiritual standpoint, it is powerfully augmented. Thank you is a wonderful prayer and is touched in all religions and faiths, everything from God is great, God is good, let, him, let us thank him for our food, to a beautiful prayer that one of my <laughs> Jewish friends turned, turned, uh, introduced me to called the Shehekiani. Not only is it fun to say, <laughs> it's a beautiful prayer, and it said, blessed are you, creator of the universe, who has sustained us and brought us to this day. So let us begin our day today by looking at the ways that we can incorporate more gratitude into our lives. Perhaps we're already there. We can always learn a little bit more. And I want to share with you five steps, five processes that you can use to really harness that power of gratitude. And of course, to make it easy, I'm going to use the word thank. How convenient is that? So when we look at the word, at the letter T, take the time every day to write down three to five things for which you're grateful. If you're already keeping a gratitude journal, wonderful. If a gratitude journal is something that you used to keep and need to get back to, start that today. This process is something that can be started today. In the words of Sarah Bon Bruthnock, she writes, you simply will not be the same person two months from now after consciously giving thanks each day for the abundance that exists in your life. And you will have set forth in motion an ancient spiritual law. The more you have and are grateful for, the more you will receive. And you may be saying, you know, gratitude sounds good, but you know, I'm going through this that I don't have a whole lot to be grateful for. Start where you can with what you are, where you are. And even if that means getting up in the morning and the only things that you can find to be grateful for are, okay, I have electricity, I slept in a bed, and I believe I can fog a mirror, start there. <laughs> I'm going to age myself just a little bit, but probably not too much with this crowd. Remember the old trash bag commercial, the healthy one? Yes. Your gratitude muscle at this time may be wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. <laughs> with that daily practice of being able to get to gratitude, of looking for things consciously in the world around us every day, we can make that gratitude muscle, and y'all say it with me, hefty, hefty, hefty. I'll oh, have sweet. One more time. Hefty, hefty, hefty. 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 Exactly. <laughs> because it is. Just by starting to notice the world around us, we can start to increase the strength of our gratitude muscle. And it starts out being, okay, I can fog a mirror. And that kind of makes you laugh. And then you start looking for more things and more things, and it becomes easier and easier. But I do have to tell you that gratitude is not for wimps. I read this in an article that Dr. Oz wrote, and I just wrote it. I just loved it. Because so many times we look at our lives, and it's really easy to be grateful when things are going well, isn't it? Oh, yay, I got a new job. Yay, I won the lottery. What happens when life is not going so well? 
How do you get to gratitude? Imagine that you are working in a job that you love. You have just had the best year of your career and you're on your way to winning a trip. Maybe you just finished a huge project and you're proud. And you receive an email inviting you to an organizational announcement conference call. And you don't think anything of it because, you know, maybe they're actually going to recognize all the people that were having this banner year. So you go into it with positive expectations. And the conference call goes something like this. Uh, yeah, the company is going through severe pro uh, financial problems right now. We're going to lose $10 million this year. By the way, your position has been eliminated effective immediately. Please stay off the phone so our outplacement firm can call you. And we're not going to answer any questions. You're going to have to wait till you get your package from FedEx, and then HR will call you. Goodbye. Click. So how are you feeling now? Are you stunned? Scared? Maybe really angry? What's going through your mind now? Well, this is exactly what happened to me on October 10th, on October 12th, 2010. I gratefully celebrated my two-year anniversary last week. <laughs> but when that call was going on, it was like being in a dream. You know one of those really horrible dreams that if you just hit yourself or pry your eyes open, you can wake up? I'm listening to this call going, this cannot be happening. Okay, this is happening. And as I was sitting at my desk, trembling from head to toe, crying, scared, having no idea what I was going to do, I started to think, okay, I've been keeping my gratitude journal. It's been about a year. How can I get to gratitude? And the voice in my head, which talks to me pretty consistently, said, go into the silence. So I sat in my office, I put my feet on the, <coughs> the floor and took a couple deep breaths and said, okay, what can I find to be grateful for? And an image of my goal sheet from 1989 popped into my head. The goal list had, I don't know, 70, 100 different lists, on, different things on. The first one, buy a house. Oh, I've already done that. Second one, become a professional speaker. The third one, write a book. It was at that moment that I noticed that I knew that the universe had bigger plans for me than I would have thought. Because from time to time in my medical sales career, I would get all cocky. Oh yeah, I'm gonna quit this job. I'm gonna build my speaking business. I'm gonna leave this all behind. But when you're making really good money and you have a company car and you don't pay for gas for seven years, that's something you walk away from. <laughs> But when the decision was made for me, it was easy to go for it. We all have choices when these type of things happen to us. There are actually three. Number one, you can wallow. How oh, can this have happened to me? I don't know what I'm gonna do now. Number two, you can remain status quo. You can find another job, maybe similar, maybe a little bit better than you had before. And you can continue with life as it was. Or you can make the decision to go to your heart and see what it was that you have always wanted to do and the gift of time and opportunity was presented to you. And you can go for it. Thankfully, with the support of my lovely husband, Scott, I was able to go for it. And it's been an amazing journey. And just like I posted on Facebook on my two-year anniversary, today is the day I celebrated two years of getting canned via conference call. <laughs> Best phone call of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so we take the time to write down our gratitudes, and that feels good. But it also has health benefits. It actually strengthens our heart and helps us physically. The Buddha once said, let us all rise up and be thankful. For if we didn't learn a lot, at least we learned a little. And if at least we didn't learn a little, and if we didn't learn a little, at least we didn't get sick. And if we got sick, at least we didn't <coughs> die. So let us all be thankful. Don't you love the Buddha's sense of humor? 
The Institute of Heart Math, which is based in California, actually looks at the performance of our heart based on various emotions. And in one of their studies, they compared frustration and appreciation. And they took a group of people, and they hooked them up to monitors, and they put them through a period of frustration. And they looked at their heart rate variability, which is the space between their heart rate, heartbeats. And it looked kind of jagged, kind of like a lie detector test, if you think about how those look. Same group of people, hooked them up to the same monitor, and put them through a period of appreciation. Smooth, even, like a wave. So not only does gratitude feel better mentally, it actually helps us physically. There's been other studies that shows that it helps support and improve our immune system as well as our ability to sleep.